Next up, we got Leafs fans are furious right now. Bye, my man Ek. All right, now if you want more more Ek videos, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Leafs fans, I'm sorry, bro. I kind of feel for the Leafs fans. I'm not gonna lie. You know, I feel like deep down, if I wasn't a, a Red Wings fan, I'd be a Leafs fan. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but hey, bro. In a press conference after today's loss to the Boston Bruins, Toronto Maple Leafs head coach Sheldon Keefe said about Brad Marchand and his knack of getting away with things, it's an art, and he's a lead at it. The rest of Maple Leaf fandom generally was not so calm about the shenanigans which went on in this evening's hockey game. Oh, and another thing too, I don't even be seeing all the things because they don't be showing it in the highlights. So I this might really, even though I watch the game, I still might still learn stuff. It's like, not so it. calm about the shenanigans which went on in this evening's hockey game. And there was one moment in particular we're what going to cover fuck? first. The Bruins collect the puck in their end while in the neutral zone, Bertuzzi and Marchand are jostling with the rat eventually taking Bertuzzi down with his stick. And this should have been called period. Bertuzzi wow, doesn't great. even really initiate the extracurricular contact here. Marchand is looking for it. I mean, this is what he does best, but this needs to be a penalty. And of course, as this is happening, Trent Frederick comes down the wing and beats Sam snuff on a shot that honestly he probably needs to have doesn't help that earlier in the sequence mcavoy also took down matthews not called as well so leafs fans i think rightfully not super happy about this but let's Damn. talk about the rest of the game because the leafs as a whole cannot blame the loss solely on poor officiating before we continue however we do have a very timely sponsor for today's video hey. no longer to hops also to know their in gift hole would go i game was really representative of how i thought this series as a whole would go. I thought that the Leafs dictated the pace of play through much of the game. There was physicality, and I'm talking all across the lineup as well, not just the fourth line, which throughout this series I thought has been Ooh. super impactful, but the Leafs superstars also looked pretty good as well. Austin Matthews definitely didn't have the same game as game two, but Mitch Marner was for the first time in the series really actually notably present, which is nice. The difference, however, was definitely goaltending. Swayman had a game to remember. I mean, the Bruins, there's been so much discussion oh, about who should crazy. start each game. And to be honest, both Swayman and Allmark have been great. It almost makes it feel like the discussion is kind of unnecessary. But with two wins now for Swayman, you have to wonder whether he just gets the green light for the rest of this series. I do think he's been maybe slightly better. I think the Bruins have a distinct advantage either way, but... Swayman has also been somewhat vocal about wanting to play. After the game, he said, I want to keep playing. Somewhat surprising, I guess. Hockey players usually in interviews try to be fairly humble, but him and Allmark have a good relationship to put it lightly. He said at the start of the series too, he's happy he's starting. I don't know, keep him in. Notably, however, during the second, Domi actually hit Swayman and somehow the Bruins oh. didn't see this. It was during a commercial break, so we would have missed some of the most fiery action of the series had they noticed it. Kind of surprised he Yo. didn't have to pay any sort of toll for that later. Don't tell me this turned into a little beef game. You know what I'm saying? Now we know we love, absolutely love the beef game. No matter what sport it is, if two teams hate each other, that makes for the best content to watch. No cap. Everybody going to be playing their best. It might be some cheap shots. Might be some fights. But it's going to be the best game we didn't watch, eh? No cap, and these two good teams too, so. They noticed it. Kind of surprised he didn't have to pay any sort of toll for that later, because it was wow. definitely on purpose. Though, I mean, obviously, Swayman also <laughs> Why played toll like for this? that later, because it was definitely on purpose. Though, I mean, <laughs> obviously, Swayman also played it up quite a bit as well. However, oh, I'll just yeah. end How the goalie reacting? section. I mean, obviously, Swayman also played it up quite a bit as well. However, I'll just end the goalie section by saying Swayman, and I saw this from Sportsnet Stats, in the last two seasons against the Leafs, has a 6-0-0 record, a 9-5-9 save percentage, percentage and a 131 GAA for a sample size that large that's frankly absurd. Anyway, Toronto would open the scoring with the type of goal they need to beat Swayman. Marner launches a beautiful cross insane. crease pass to Nyes, insane. who finishes before briefly colliding with Swayman. That was the one nothing goal, and also the first time the Leafs would score first in the series. The Bruins would tie it up with that Trent Frederick goal we discussed at the beginning of the video. If you're a Leafs fan, that's a really, really ugly goal, not just because of the shenanigans on ice, but it's completely saving. Wow. Think about it, though. 
know, it had been some like crazy goals, bro. I think that's what I'm gonna do. I think I'm gonna try to react to like the best NHL um, goals because I think, bro. I, I, I not gonna lie, I, I I like it. Like like seeing sniper shots is just so satisfying. Like. Love Ugly it. goal, not it, just because it. of the shenanigans on ice, but it's completely savable. I mean, he's coming down the wing and sort of just throws it on net. I don't know what the Leafs are going to do. I assume Samsonov probably starts game four as well, but bad goal at a really bad time. It would be nice for the Leafs to go into the permission actually up a goal. And I mean, that's the difference between exceptional goaltending like the Bruins have gotten all series and what the Leafs have. And that's playoff hockey, like fighting for each goal versus kind of broken play down the wing and a bit of luck. The Bruins would go ahead then on a bit of a weird one on the PP. Marchand throws the puck on net. I can't tell whether it hits DeBrusque or Samsonov fails to control the rebound. Either way, it ends up loose in front of the net, potted home 2-1. Marchand, by the way... you think about it. As a goalie, is it low-key, like, a mandatory for you to be able to do the splits? If you really think about it, it's low-key mandatory for you to do the splits. Think about it. Because if, if you can't do the splits, then what? You, you're not going to be that good. Let's be honest. You're not gonna be that good. You have to be able to spread your body and go this way and go that way. <laughs> be personally, can't do this. Either way, it ends up loose Brother, in front of the net. Casually, at home. Just, look, he just casually, both legs spread wide open and sitting down like that. Like, bro, my hips, my whole, I don't know what this called in my body, but just my whole, like, just, yeah, my hip area, bro. To one. Game Marchand, game. by the way, after kind of a quiet game two and game one, really showed up tonight. The Leafs, on the other hand, especially on the power play, it feels like really missing William Nylander, who's still sitting out for some unknown reason. Oh, Halfway through the that, third dang. period, however, the Leafs would tie it. Kind of a similar goal to the first one, similar idea anyway. Good movement of the puck, a quick shot. That's how you're going to beat an elite goaltender. Oh, yeah, however, <laughs> less than 30 seconds later, Brad Marchand gets the go ahead goal breaking the tie this was just devastating all the air left the arena bit of a weird situation here marshawn gets the puck in the circle <laughs> samsonov doesn't have a stick and i think he's probably not hugging the post as tightly as he would otherwise to help more evenly protect the top of the net and marshy just snipes one this is an incredible shot short side and that would be the game winning goal so the leafs aren't getting amazing goaltending and they're not getting scoring look at the box score one of the big difference is power plays. The Leafs had five this game. They went 0 for 5. Bruins had three, and including an empty net goal at the end, they would go 2 for 3. The Leafs power play really has been abysmal all series. They're 1 for 11. That's nowhere near good enough. The Bruins right now are running at a 50% clip. 5 out of 10. Is that sustainable over an entire playoff run? I mean, who knows, but over a series, massive difference. Leafs fans, I think, should take some solace in the fact that, again, I thought they played well. I thought their forwards generally looked pretty good, but they need to get their power play going. They need to find answers for Swayman. And ideally, Samsonov has to find that next level. So, besides for their scoring, there's... no Leafs fan. How mad are y'all? Um, I still got faith in y'all, bro. I'm not gonna lie. I got faith. 